<coughs> Excuse me, kitty. Hi, I'm Dala, and uh, today I'm going to show you how to flash the two-port CAN bridge step by step, and also tell you a bit about some updates that have arrived for the two-port CAN bridge. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so here are the things you're going to need. A uh, two-port CAN bridge, uh, I got this one off uh, AliExpress. And uh, next also, we're going to use an SD uh, V2 flasher and a laptop. So the first thing I usually do when these arrive is uh, they have this uh, flat ribbon cable attached to them. That's not required. So I'm just going to take a pair of uh, wire snips and cut this one off because it serves no purpose for our use case. So we got rid of that. And um, next I like to flash these. So for this we need the laptop and I'm going to connect this ST-Link V2 to the laptop. But before we do that, uh, these um, wires that come out of the board, they need to be mapped to the correct pads on the board here. And I have this all on GitHub, how you need to connect these. I've made my, uh, I have this one with uh, needle pins because I've been flashing a lot of boards. I just pin the needles down on each board, then move to the next one, etc. But uh, you can also just use uh, something like, a, uh, you can actually use this uh, ribbon cable that comes with the board and you can just break this one off into pieces and plug it in here and just um, take the wires and go, have them directly go to the PCB, uh, whatever works for you. You can get a bit creative with this one. But anyways, uh, to do the flashing, we plug this one into the laptop. And then I take my needle board and I attach it here to the J1 header. And uh, now we are ready for flashing. So now we will move to the computer side. Okay, let's get started with the flashing process. So first thing I do is I go to GitHub, uh, where the software is located. And this is a fresh new computer that hasn't flashed before. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to this software needed to flash section and download the STM32 SD link utility. And you actually have to make an account on this page to download it, but I've already done that. So I'm scrolling down here to get software, get latest, accept the license agreements that everyone reads. And I have now downloaded the software. So I open it up and I run the setup file. Yes. And this is gonna take a few minutes. Just click next, next, next on everything. Yes, and it's done. Then it will also tell me a bit about software drivers. Yes, we install those and we finish. So that's great. Now we can go back to the GitHub page and uh, we're going to download the latest release of the software. And we do this via the uh, releases section, version 4.19. And here's a bit what's new. You can read all about the software, but we're just going to skip here and download the CanBridge SREC file. So that's the latest software. And I'm also going to download the entire source code because this contains the flasher that we're going to be needing and I open up this and I extract this to the downloads folder. Now if I go into the downloads folder we can open up this and go into software. We're flashing the two port and I'm gonna run the flashing tool which is this one the bridge flasher. So I double click that and Windows protects me against it, but I'm going to run it anyways. And here in this program, we define two things uh, where the SD link uh, command line interface has been installed and where the SREC file is. And let's start with the STM32. So we browse on over to where this has been installed. And I think actually it went to the x86. STM micro Lexrix, STM32, link utility, and here we have the ST link CLI. So that's the one we select. And then it asks us for the SREC file, and we're going to go to the downloads and take the Cambridge SREC file that we downloaded, 
And now we connect our board to the PC and press flash. And that is what you want to see. If you see unlock success, patched SREC with unique ID, programming complete, then you are done. But I'm also going to show you uh, some other failure scenarios here. Say you don't have the board connected, I just unhooked it, and so I only had the flash and nothing else. And if I press flash, it's going to say that it wasn't able to connect to the SD link. So then you know if you get this message, you know that you need to check your wires. But yeah, that's it. Now we can go and install this in the car. So I already have uh, videos up on installing CAN bridges, both on the older 2011-2012 uh, model, where you do it in the center console, but also the later model, the 2013 plus, uh, you do it on the left hand side in the footwell. But you can watch those videos if you need help on installing. I also have the wire diagrams available on GitHub. But uh, then again, a bit about the updates for the battery upgrade code. So a few weeks ago, we released this version 4.19. And uh, what's new in this one is that it's actually uh, great uh, now for winter because this version will consume less power. And uh, actually I measured this with a multimeter and uh, with the latest update the bridge consumes 40% uh, less power. And what this means is that uh, your 12 volt battery is going to last way much longer if you update to this newest version. Because keep in mind the CAN bridge needs to stay powered on all the time so it is... Uh, uh, ready to intercept any CAN messages that come. And it would have been great if we could have just uh, turned on the CAN bridge when the car gets turned on, but uh, unfortunately uh, the Leaf likes to turn things on via CAN messages, so this one has to always stay active and always ready. But yeah, if you have a, a two-port CAN bridge, then updating to version 4.19 is uh, highly recommended. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this quick video and um, yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.